Figs are a complicated fruit. In fact, they're not even fruits. They're flowers, actually inside out flowers. And some of those flowers can only be pollinated by one particular kind of insect. And that insect doesn't make it out alive. Like I said, it's complicated, but I'm going to clear everything up. So let's get started. It breaks my heart that millions of Americans have never tasted a fresh fig. I love the jammy texture of a perfectly ripe fig, and compared to most other fruits, they're an incredible source of fiber, calcium, and potassium. No other fruit we eat is like a fig. A fig starts off as a clump of hundreds of teeny tiny flowers trapped inside a fleshy stem. When those flowers are pollinated, they produce fruits, the real fruits. See, each one of these tadpole-like structures is an individual fruit with its own seed. Those seeds give dried figs their signature crunch. So if the flowers are inside the fig, how are they pollinated? Other plants need bees or wind to spread the pollen to the female flowers, but bees can't possibly get inside this thing, right? Not to pollinate them, they can't. Lovely people meet fig farmer Brent Morgan. Howdy. <laughs> so see this part here, this is called an osteole. You can call it the eye. Thanks. What can possibly be so small that it can fit into a part that's no bigger than a pinhole. Blastophag obscenes. Gesundheit. Uh, it's the, the fig wasp. Right. So there's one special kind of wasp that pollinates the fig, and it's tiny, smaller than a gnat. There's actually a specialized wasp for each species of fig. That's amazing, right? So, fig wasps lay their eggs in male figs, which are inedible, but they have the male flowers. They're called capra figs, and from the outside, it's really hard to tell them apart from female figs, which are the ones we eat. The pregnant female wasp enters the capra fig through the eye. She lays her eggs, and the males hatch first. They impregnate the female babies. Yep, their own sisters. And while they're still in their eggs. The males then bore a hole outside of the fig for the females to escape when they hatch. When the already pregnant females are born, they rub against the male flowers on the way out, covering themselves in pollen. Now they go looking for a new capra fig to lay their own eggs in, but often they crawl into a female fig because they can't even tell them apart. As the wasp enters the female fig, the pollen from the capra fig rubs off her body and fertilizes the flowers, which causes that fig to swell and ripen into the delicious fig we know and love. Now, that's great for us, but not so great for the wasp. Because unlike the capra fig, the female fig's flowers cannot support her eggs. Wait, what happens to the mother wasp? Her wings get ripped off as she's going inside the fig and she dies. Wait, what? There's a dead wasp in my fig? <sighs> okay, we gotta get something straight, because I've seen a whole lot of hysteria across the internet about whether we're eating figs with wasps inside. The chances of you eating a fig with a wasp in it, if it was grown commercially in the US, is virtually zero. Almost all the fig varieties we grow here ripen into fruit on their own. Black Mission, Brown Turkey, Kadota, Adriatic. They don't need the wasp to bring in pollen because they're self-fertile. It's called Parthenocarpy, and you can learn all about it in our seedless fruit and vegetable video. I'll put the link down below. The only kind of fig here that does need the wasp is the Calamerna, and it's grown almost exclusively as a dried fig or for dried fig products, like the filling in your Fig Newton. So what about those calamernas? Are you crunching on dead wasps inside your Fig Newtons? Well, the answer might surprise you. But first, allow me to slip into something a little more comfortable. So, what about those calamernas? Are you crunching on dead wasps in your Fig Newtons? 
well, not crunching. See, figs contain a protein digesting enzyme called physin. Physin essentially dissolves the wasp, which remember is so tiny it can pass through the eye of a needle. It basically becomes a pinch of liquid protein. Brent doesn't need any wasps to grow figs in the orchard at Hilgert Farm. If this place looks familiar, you're right. It's H.G. Haskell's farm, where we brought you the incredible story of heirloom tomatoes. And it's where Brent farms his 300 fig trees, all self-fertile, using 100% organic practices. Brent himself is no ordinary fig farmer. For one thing, he only grows fresh figs. The vast majority of figs farmed in the U.S. are for the dried market, over 90%. What is truly amazing about this orchard is that it is thriving in a very unlikely and difficult climate. Fig trees are native to the Mediterranean and the Middle East, where it is hot and dry. This is Pennsylvania, with humid, wet summers and bitter winters. In fact, fig trees here regularly die back to the roots during the winter time. Yet, Brent is some kind of fig wizard, overcoming the elements and a vacuum of agricultural expertise. See, the American fig industry is concentrated in California. That's why there's been so little research invested into understanding how to grow figs outside of a warm, dry climate, let alone fresh figs. Brent has had to achieve everything through trial and error, a decade's worth of pioneering experimentation. Now, fig trees can grow from seed, but it's not guaranteed that they'll have the same traits as the parents. So, to get consistent varieties, Brent takes cuttings from his mature trees and establishes them in pots. Once Brent transplants a young tree into the orchard, he has to keep it protected from winter's harsh temperatures. He's devised his own system of using string to anchor and fold each branch down to the ground. He puts bags of leaves over them as insulation and then covers it all with soft synthetic row cover. By the way, this is just a demo. When Brent does this for real in the fall, the branches have already lost their leaves. Now, to grow great figs in a place that gets a lot of summertime rain, Brent has to do some super labor-intensive work in the springtime. He has to prune each one of his 300 trees. You want good light penetration into the canopy and also air circulation. When things start to get too dense, it slows down ripening, and uh, you also start to get sort of more fungal problems with the leaves and the fruit. I'll go through and remove growths that don't have any fruit set. Oh, I see. And I remove them completely, um, just like this, all the way at the base. But pruning comes with a unique risk. Check this out. That milky white substance is latex. It will actually burn your skin if exposed to sunlight. That latex is in the branches, in the leaves, even in the stems of unripe figs. That's why in California, harvesters have to wear gloves and long sleeves, because unlike Brent, they're not really picking their figs at peak ripeness. If they did, they'd be too soft to ship across the country. Instead, they have to pick them just as they start to ripen, and that's why there's a threat of latex. So sometimes, you know, you really have to sort of get in and uh, push things aside to find these figs. So there's I think one. I'm eating leaves. <laughs> there's one right there. Okay, I'm gonna try my hand here. Oh yeah, they come right off. It yep. was really easy. Okay, yep. and I don't think I damaged the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Look at that color. God. <laughs> Whoa.
Now, the harvest for dried figs is something entirely different. You're going to want to hear about that, especially if you're worried about creepy crawlies in your figs. But hold on, because Brent's got his own battles to fight with his fresh figs. During harvest season, Brent picks his figs every other day. The fruit at the bottom of the tree ripens earliest, and the ripening continues up each branch. If he neglects to harvest, the figs would become so soft and sugary that they're essentially neon signs attracting all kinds of bugs. Once you have overripe figs in your orchard, you're going to start to get ants, mm. yellow jackets, honeybees, um, fruit flies can reproduce on you know, fallen, spoiled fruit. Here at Hillgirt Farm, when harvest begins in September, the figs that are picked are lusciously soft. Some have shallow cracks running down their lengths, which isn't a defect, by the way. With some varieties, it's a sign they've hit their absolute peak ripeness. So you won't see that on grocery store figs very often. If you do, that you know that's a good sign. Yeah. You're still thinking about dead wasps, aren't you? Well, let me give you something else to think about. Figs grown for dried fruit, which remember is over 90% of the figs grown in this country. They're left to ripen on the tree until they literally fall off. And if they don't fall off, farmers bring in big fans to blow them off. Now, those super ripe, oozing figs lay there in the dirt until they're mechanically swept up and gathered. Then they're fumigated, which means they're sprayed with a gaseous pesticide because you have to kill all the critters that crawled inside those super ripe figs as they laid there in the dirt. After fumigation, they're washed and go on for further processing. Still thinking about dead wasps? You're still, oh, I'm sorry. I, this is, come on, mouth. You're still fucking. <laughs> sorry. <sighs> Wait, what? There's a dead wasp in my fig? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>